Hi, and welcome to another video presentation on cognitive assessment. Today I'd like to talk about A.R. Luria, the great Russian neuropsychologist of the 20th century, and the test that now bears his name, the Luria Nebraska Neuropsychological Test Battery. Luria excelled in clinical diagnosis. He had access to a seemingly unlimited number of Russian brain injury cases, and he developed his own approach to evaluating these patients. Unlike Western neuropsychologists, he did not rely on tests and test scores. Rather, he devised a set of clinical procedures that he could vary as he wished in order to elicit different kinds of responses and to gain access into different windows onto the disability involved. He made extensive use of mental arithmetic because he found that he could vary the task demands seemingly in an unlimited number of ways in order to help him diagnostically. Luria had great success in the West, primarily because of one book, Higher Cortical Functions in Man, that was published in the 1960s and became an instant success. This attracted many neuropsychologist to work with him and observe his methods, and Anne Christensen was one of them. She published a book, Luria's Neuropsychological Investigations, in 1975, in which she set forth a detailed list of the kinds of cognitive procedures and tasks that he relied on. This served as a template for the development of the Luria Nebraska test. The idea was that the individual task could be uh, put into specific scales and that Western psychometrics could be superimposed and lend structure to Luria's clinical methods. It seemed as if this was an ideal combination of East and West, using and benefiting from psychometric methods and yet incorporating the uh, variety of clinical procedures that made Luria uh, such a good diagnostician. Unfortunately, it did not work very well. The test items that were put together didn't really make scales, even though they were forced almost in a Procrustean way into a set of scales. Worse, these items lost their utility without the unlimited process and variability that Luria himself would give to these test items. Instead, the tests consisted of rigidified items that no longer defined a meaningful space. Next time, I'd like to talk about an approach that I developed using the vocabulary subtest of the Wechsler Intelligence Scale. I hope you'll join me then. Thank you.